How's it going, everybody? So, the long-awaited revenge guide. About time. I've been procrastinating on that one for I don't know how many months now. Revenge is probably one of the most misunderstood, or rather least understood mechanics in the game. Many players have certain expectations towards it, and if those aren't fulfilled, they claim it's not working properly. So here we are. This will be as in-depth a guide as I can make it, so please watch the whole thing and pay proper attention, as not everything is immediately obvious and you might have to re-watch certain parts. The video will be separated in a few subsections. When do you get revenge? How much revenge do you get? And what properties do you have while being in revenge? And we will start with the most important one first, as it's also the one most people know the least about. When do you actually get revenge, aka how does the tax system work? To determine whether you are actually eligible to gain revenge, For Honor uses a tax system. Every time you attack someone, or when someone attacks you, a tag is applied. You can have up to four tags on you, and you can also apply up to four tags, one on each opposing player. A tag lasts for exactly five seconds and refreshes every time an offensive action is performed. Attacks, GBs, bashes and so on. I will talk about exceptions in just a bit. Whether you have tags on you or have applied to other players is not represented in the UI. You need to keep an overview of the fight and the clock to be able to reliably tell when you get or feed revenge respectively. A recent patch introduced the revenge meter around the emblems or symbols, yet tags are still on you to keep track of. And here comes the first misconception that leads to a lot of confusion and angry clips. To actually gain revenge, you need a minimum of two tags applied to you. That is what everyone knows. But does this mean you will always gain revenge with two tags? No, you do not always get to fill your revenge bar just because you have two tags. The critical thing here is the following. To gain revenge, you not only need a minimum of two tags, you also need to have at least one more tag applied to you than the opposing player that is hitting you. This means that if your opponent also has two tags on them, you will not gain revenge. In this situation, you need a minimum of three tags on you. This is to prevent excessive revenge gain during team fights or in general even numbered fights. Let's look at examples. I have color coded these clips and have these little revenge tag timers. I hope it is clear which timer belongs to which player. Let's get over this again then. Like I said, each attack, GB, bash, etc. applies a tag. That tag lasts 5 seconds. Once a second tag is applied to you, you will start gaining revenge. Both opposing players have zero tags on them at this point. If I attack one or even both of them, then they each have one tag, but as I meet the requirements of a minimum of two tags on me, plus having at least one more than them, I continue to gain revenge in this fight. Once one of them stops attacking me, then I will no longer have two tags, thus I will no longer fill my revenge meter. Now let's apply an equal number of tags to everyone. All four players have two tags on them. As explained before, this will lead to no revenge gain for any of them. The minimum requirement of two tags is met, yet no one has one more tag than the other. Well, that's not the only requirement for team fights. I know that there are a lot of numbers on the screen and it's not immediately obvious which belongs to whom. So let's rewatch the middle part again and I'll explain the additional requirement. In this scenario here, I did have two tags already and my opponent had one or less, but I did not gain revenge while the George still had one active tag. This means that tags carry additional information, meaning it knows it was a two tag tag, for the lack of a better term. For me to gain revenge, all those tags needed to drop first before I started filling my bar. In team fights, once people start to focus someone, tags will drop and eventually someone will be able to gain revenge. This is how people end up with revenge sometimes, yet next time you finish a two minute fight with like 30% of your revenge bar. Case in point, here we have a 3v2 in which we meet the requirements. It's not that easy to stage these, so try and follow along with the tags and try and identify when I gained revenge and when you previously thought I should have gained revenge. Mute me and watch it at half speed or something. This is just something you need to learn to identify yourself. 
Tag management is important in this game and even having rudimentary knowledge about it is probably more than most people can claim for themselves. If it's only one thing you take away from this video then let it be this, the way how tags work. Every single clip that's been posted since the revenge fix where someone is complaining about not getting revenge despite being ganked could be explained with this. I was not joking last time when I said that revenge is indeed working as intended at the moment. But we are far from done here because not every single offensive action does apply a revenge tag. There are moves that do not. Most specifically feats. All damage dealing feats work just like attacks, so no worries there. But debuff feats, while giving an assist tag, meaning you gain renown from a takedown, they do not add a revenge tag. This means that you can contribute to a fight without any downsides. This covers the section about when you gain revenge. Next point is how much do you gain? What factors influence how fast or sometimes how slow you fill your revenge meter? The first one, the base HP of your hero. The lower your HP, the faster you gain revenge. Currently Shinobi has the lowest amount of health, thus gains revenge the fastest. An important thing to remember here is that I said base HP. Every perk or feat that increases your health does not play a role here and are irrelevant when it comes to revenge. Second factor, the type of attack. It doesn't really matter whether it is a light or a heavy, important is the amount of damage it does. The more damage it does, the more revenge it feeds. A very important aspect here is that damage reduction will not affect your revenge gain negatively. You will gain the full revenge based on the base damage of an attack. This also means that debuffs on you or buffs on your opponent do not change the amount of revenge an attack feeds. Other moves like bashes and GBs have a base amount that they feed which has been named as 20 in previous patch notes. As we don't really know the number of a full bar, we can only speculate. For GBs, it doesn't matter whether those are successful, countered or even bounced. They always feed the exact same amount. Feeds follow their own rules. There are many non-damaging feeds that feed quite a significant amount. Kiai is a good example here. I will not go over each and every one here, especially since we can't really quantify the amount properly anyways. Damage over time does not feed revenge at all. That is another big advantage of bleed damage especially. Only the direct damage portion of bleed attacks does feed revenge, whereas the dot itself will not. Then we have different multipliers that also play a big role. The first badge, Dodging, successful hit, block or parry. In the order I just listed them, they feed from the least to the most. Yes you heard right, dodging offers the least amount of revenge gain. It still follows the same rules as in a potentially higher damage and attack will feed more if dodged. Main problem here is that it is quite inconsistent. From what we can tell, only if you dodge an attack during your iframes will it count towards revenge. Yet many attacks can be dodged in a far bigger window, which will mean you gain absolutely nothing. The second one depends on the tags again. The more outnumbered you are, the more revenge you get. The multipliers are as follows. 0.6 in a 1v2, 0.8 in a 1v3 and 0.9 in a 1v4. These are once again numbers given to us by Ubisoft. What we can deduce here is that adding a third tag is always a horrible idea. Once three are added, might as well throw in the fourth. The person will gain revenge no matter what. So in complicated team fights with a non-stop change in numbers of tags, what multiplier does apply on a, let's say, a 2v3 for example? From our testing, it is the same as a 1v2. So tags act in relation to each other and it's not just counting the highest number. It's probably linked to what I explained in the tag section, that they hold more information. Now, when will your revenge meter drop down again? First of all, when you unlock. 
It takes exactly 5 seconds before it starts dropping. For the bar to go down to 0, it depends on the hero. As an example, it's 7.7 .7 seconds on a 120 HP hero and 9.2 on 140 HP ones. You can, however, hold revenge by locking on to another opponent within said time frame. This resets the timer. I will talk more about revenge holding in just a little bit. But it is important to be locked onto a player. Being locked onto nothing will not stop the timer. Feats like Smoke Bomb that force you to drop your lock on can also cause this. While unlocked, you will also not gain any revenge, no matter how many tags you currently have on you. Being out of lock makes you ineligible for revenge gain, but you will collect and keep tags while unlocked, meaning you will gain revenge the moment you lock on again, and you will not have to be tagged again. The last thing to cover here is the feed revenge attacks. It is available on PK, Gladiator, Zerka, Shaman, Nobu, Orochi, Shinobi, Nusha and JJ, so quite a few. It works independently of the tag system, meaning you can get revenge in a 1v1 and multiple tags on you will not increase the amount you get from it. It adds a flat amount of revenge for each successful hit depending on two things. First, the HP of your character, that's still a thing, the less you have, the more you gain. To give you an idea, for a 120 HP character, it takes 20 heavies to fill it, and for a 140 HP character, they need 23. And the second criterion, whether it's a light or heavy, the damage of each attack does not matter. It's all about whether the attack is considered a heavy or a light. This is one of the main reasons why Berserker benefits so much from it. His zone attack counts as 4 heavies, so he can fill his full bar with 5 zones. Bashes and feats do not give you any revenge. This should cover all the criteria for how much revenge you gain. With the additional outline that has been added just recently, people should be able to very much have a rough idea during a fight about how much revenge they have already fed and how much additional attacks will feed. Alright, so now you know when and how much revenge you can get in each specific scenario. So, what if you finally got it? What then? Revenge has quite a few properties that you should know about. First thing, the auto parry when you pop it. It takes 100 milliseconds for the parry to activate. It is not instant, so keep that in mind when you do it on the reaction to a light attack. This also is important for ganks, as you can hit within the 100 milliseconds time window to get additional damage in. Said auto parry has a duration of 800 milliseconds. Those active frames can be cancelled by actions. That used to include even guard switch which has been fixed but as soon as you start moving or throwing out attacks, those parry frames are cancelled. The punish for each hero on a revenge knockdown can be found in my max punish video so look them up there if you are unfamiliar with them for the heroes that you play. Now that you are in revenge, you have a 30% increase in damage, which follows the usual damage stacking rules. Additionally, you have a 120 HP shield, and all of that lasts for exactly 8 seconds. On top of all that, your attacks are now armoured. To be precise, it is super armour, meaning that neither attacks nor bashes can interrupt you once you are in a move. You also have no GB vulnerability on any of them. It's just between attacks that you are still susceptible to interrupts in form of attacks, bashes or GBs. During throws, it's bashes and feats that can interrupt you. Your own GBs are also armoured and do ignore GB vulnerability. That means you can grab opponents out of their attacks. Your throws while in revenge function the same as if your opponent was out of stamina. Every throw will knock them to the floor, same as every parry that you get. 
And one more property, your attacks are now all enhanced. Your lights will no longer bounce on blocks. Most of you have probably been familiar with all of that already, but never heard to have them all listed. So now for a few of the problems that a lot of the community agrees with. Well, I'm not going to go into the whole debate whether the tax system is actually the best system that Ubisoft could have come up with, as that would require a lot of testing and tweaking, so just us debating it on a theoretical level will probably not get us anywhere. But there are some problems that I want to mention. The first one is revenge holding. I know the clip here is pretty old, but it's rare to find people mess up this hard, so I saved it. The fact that you have no timer on when you need to pop your revenge can lead to quite weird fight scenarios, even to a point where it's possible to get, half and hold revenge while ganking someone. The current limitations when it comes to holding revenge are way too lax. Whatever approach you want to take here, instant pop once revenge is filled, or give it a timer of, let's say, within 10 seconds of getting revenge, you need to pop it. Because it's pretty much impossible to fight someone in a 1v1 that is holding on to a full bar. The other one is one that actually leads to problems like I just mentioned, where people end up with revenge while ganking someone. That is, tax from a person need to disappear the very moment they die. Tax persisting throughout death is extremely annoying. Now with the additional outline and the fact that we know exactly how much revenge our opponent has, this might be a less common scenario now, but it can still happen that the outnumbering party somehow pulls revenge out of their arse because the tags from people they just killed remain on them. In conclusion, whether you gain revenge is very much in control of your attackers. A lot of the time it's actually detrimental for you to even start attacking when outnumbered, as that would mean you aren't being attacked, meaning you don't gain revenge. People that know how to manage this and also know how tags work which most of you should know now, will not needlessly give someone revenge. Oftentimes, it doesn't even have to be the case. If some random clown puts themselves out of stamina while ganking, this also means he's not feeding anything and probably also results in their tax dropping. Alright, let's just leave it at that now. We're probably almost at 20 minutes by now and this is a lot of info all at once, but now you at least have a source to look it all up again. A huge shout out to everyone that has helped gather the information and especially helped record all of this. Recording alone was probably close to 8 hours. So thank you for your time guys and also for all the extra input. I hope that this video has shed some light on the topic of revenge but should there still be questions feel free to ask them down below. Or even better join my discord and ask there. Having said all that, I hope the video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Laters everybody.